Good evening. Good evening, my dear Elder Obeng. Thank you so much for that powerful prayer. And welcome back again, all the saints of Mount Zion Fellowship Church, to our Wednesday Bible study class. I salute all of you. And um, as uh, Elder Obeng has prayed, we shall be missing our General Vasia, who is also a very active. Um, member for his contributions and um, his spirit is here with us and we'll make sure that he gets every recording of what we are going to do tonight so tonight is going to be a kind of um, a joint uh, discussion group about the book of uh, hebrew that we found so profound so um very very wealthy very very rich immoral values and uh, so so that and that's why we, we have decided just to summarize the whole 13 chapters tonight instead of uh, just jumping straight away to the next uh, book which is uh, James which um, my dear uh, elder uh, Usman Kagbo will be uh, uh, leading us next Wednesday the book of James so tonight we have the summary of the book of uh, Hebrew the what it is all about why was it written to whom was it written and uh, why was it written so the historic book was not an episode as such but letters written to the early Jewish uh, Christian believers and the book of Hebrew is divided under the following themes uh, that is the introduction of the book then then one is it, it places emphasis on Jesus Christ that the great Jesus Christ is greater than the angels and Jesus Christ is greater than Moses and Jesus Christ is greater than Aaron and Jesus Christ is greater than the Jewish religion and then then it, after after uh, satisfying his argument on on the case for Christ he went on to to the church of Christ how we endure and then the church of Christ how we uh, the, the, that's a faithful and then the church of christ how it is holy so <clears throat> the first christians were jewish the first christians the first early christians they were all jewish and the first congregation of the lord's church was also made up of jewish people because if you remember all the 12 disciples were all jews and and they were the one that uh, you know, started the, the Church of Christ after the day of Pentecost. So they were all Jews. And so the first scripture used to prove Christ as the Messiah were also the Jewish scriptures, which we refer to as the Old Testament, because it, it was in, in the Old Testament that, that uh, a lot of prophecies about the Messiah was uh, written, and, and Jesus Christ fulfilled all the prophecies in the Old Testament to prove that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, is, is, is the Lord and Savior, and is the Son of God. So everything was in the Old Testament. And so it took approximately 10 years for the apostles to preach the gospel to non-Jews because after, after the day of Pentecost, it was not immediately that the Gentiles received the gospel of Jesus Christ. It took almost about 10 years. 10 years after the day of Pentecost and and that was the time that uh, Apostle Peter went to Joppa and he had a dream if you remember he had a dream and he saw a platform descending from heaven on which there are different type of uh, animals creeping animals flying animals flying objects and then the, 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 the voice came he said Peter he said arise uh, uh, kill and, and eat and Peter said but Lord I've never tasted anything unclean in my mouth before and the voice said what God has uh, has made you must not call unclean and why was Peter telling whoever was talking to you whether an angel or God that, that you know that I've never eaten unclean is because according to the Jewish tradition they were forbidden from eating certain things which we have already also read in the previous uh, books that we have studied some something like a pig they don't eat pig 
something like uh, uh, creeping animals, they don't eat cre uh, creeping animals, uh, something like um, um, like fish that is that is not scaled. So 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 they have different types of things that they were listed by Moses that were forbidden. Even uh, uh, animals that were strangled, they don't eat it at all. So 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 the, the that platform came three times, and they asking Peter to just take and eat or kill and eat. Peter said, "No, I have not tasted anything unclean in my mouth before." About that voice said, "But what God has already created, you must not call unclean." So when he woke up from that vision, he started wondering, "Why, why, why was God asking him to kill and, and so many unclean things to him?" Then, 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 then he, he saw in a vision that some people were coming to him to ask for him. So, and those people were Gentiles, they were the messengers of a, a, a Roman centurion called Cornelius, who sent to, to Peter that he should come to his house. And it was forbidden also again for Jews to enter to, under the roof of any Gentiles. It's completely forbidden. So, so, so that, so that when, when, when the people came now asking for Peter, Peter knew straight away that the voice said, go with them. The voice said, go with them. So, so, so that Peter was able to, to, to understand why he saw that dream, that what God has created. In other words, God was not referring to what God has created as animals that he has created and all this unclean, but it's also referring to us that he has already created man and woman of different races whether you are gentile whether you are black you are blue you are red you are Caucasian, you are anything we are all god's children and nobody should be called us unclean so so that so that that was the interpretation of that vision that peter saw and then the, the voice said follow them so so peter followed them so in other words what we are saying is that it took approximately 10 years for the apostle to preach the gospel to non-Jews, that is Cornelius and his household, as we read in Acts of Apostles chapter 10. Because when, when Peter got there, Cornelius knelt down to worship him. He said, no, don't worship me. He said, it is forbidden for Jews to enter the house of Gentiles, but what did he send to me? And Cornelius said, when he was praying, he saw an angel. And the angel told him that there was Peter in, in in Joppa, in the house of a, a tent maker, that he should go there, send somebody there for him. So, so Peter said, truly, I know that God is not in respect of any person. So, so Cornelia said, we want you to talk to us about Jesus Christ. So, as Peter was just telling them about about Jesus Christ, he has not even finished talking to them. When all of a sudden there was wild wind and the, 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 the Holy Spirit descended upon them the same way and manner that it descended upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. So all the people, all the Jews that went with Peter, that, that they, they couldn't say, they could, they could not uh, uh, prevent Peter from going. Because Peter was the head, so they followed him reluctantly. But they now saw the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit descended upon all the Gentiles in the household of Cornelius, the same way and manner that it descended on the disciples in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. And Peter said, oh, if the Holy Ghost descended upon these Gentiles, who am I that I should forbid the waters that these people should not be baptized? He said, no, I can't, I can't prevent them from being baptized. So he baptized them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter was amazed that truly the Gentiles have also received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that was 10 years after the Pentecost. So, so that, that, that was the, the foundation that the, the, the writer of the Hebrew was building for these people. So in the first 30 years of Christianity, you could be a Hebrew Christian and still practice your Jewish faith and tradition because the two religions we are seen as different forms of the same thing. Eventually, however, this became more difficult for a variety of reasons. So, for the next 30 years, after, after the Pentecost, 
Majority of those people, the Christian believers, were also still practicing Judaism. They have not completely left Judaism because it was difficult. So, so because they were still ob uh, observing all the rites, all the all the the, the things they were have to do, the, the Sabbath, the Sabbath observance, they were still observing the Sabbath. They were still paying, uh, 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 you know, all these uh, rites and everything. They were still doing everything that they were doing before. So, so that so that so that it took about thirty years for for that Jewish religion to fade out gradually, for them to embrace Christianity. And that was the parable of Jesus when, when he was saying old wine and old back, that the, the new wine is the new gospel of Jesus Christ. The old, the old wine in the old bag is the mosaic law in the old bag. But it is not possible now to put a new wine into that old bag again. It is going to bust it. So, so, so that the two could, the religions could not go pari pasu, they can't go together. It has to be, and it took 30 years. And, and the reason why the, 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 the differentiation came up was that the, the Jewish religion became more hostile towards Christianity. The Jewish religion became more hostile towards Christianity. Because if you have been following the book of Hebrew and the, and the Acts of Apostles that we have just uh, finished, you, you find out that um, it got to a state, the Jewish religion, all the Jewish, the, the Pharisees, the scribes, they, they started becoming envious, they started becoming jealous of Christianity because more crowds, more people were believing, more people were flooding into Christianity. Because Christianity supported the poor, Christianity supported, it, it gave them hope, it gave them, it gave them courage, it encourages them. Unlike in, 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 in Judaism, in which the, the Pharisees imposed a yoke upon these people, the yoke that they, they, to the, could, they could not keep themselves. And that was the bane of, of, the, of the problem Jesus Christ had with these Pharisees too. Because one thing is, if you remember, most of the miracles that Jesus Christ performed on the Sabbath day, they opposed him. But Jesus Christ told them that which are which were for you with your own camel or your ass or your own donkey will fall into a well on the Sabbath day and you will not go there to rescue him and leave it there until the until after the Sabbath. So that's why you are as Pharisees said you people are hypocrites. You shut the gate of heaven on the faces of people that want to enter and yet you too you refuse to enter into it. So these are all the problems that Jesus Christ had with these people. And the same disciples too, the same followers, to date all, all Christians who are facing the same problem, arguing with the Muslims, arguing with the non-believers, because they just cannot understand the concept of Christianity. Because we found peace, we found understanding, we found hope, we found salvation in Christianity through Christ. And there's no other religion that offers salvation except Christianity. So, so it was difficult for them, and, and that was the reason why the, the Saul of Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus was a Pharisee, was a Jewish uh, 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 um, zealous lawyer that was trained under, under the most uh, 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 professor of those days, Gamaliel. And, and, and he was very zealous for God, he was very religious. So he thought that persecuting the Christian is, is doing a job for God. And that is why he witnessed the, 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 the first uh, 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 stoning to death of, of uh, 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 Stephen. Because they said there was a young man under whose feet, the people that stoned Stephen to death kept their, their garments and, and, and all their raiments and everything. And that was Saul of Tarsus. And I see that was not good enough. He took permission, took authority from the from the from the from the priest that let me go to Damascus because they've all run away from Jerusalem. They've all run to Antioch. Christians scatter. After the persecution, Christians scatter from Jerusalem to, to Damascus, to Caesarea, 
to uh, Antioch, all these places. So let me go, let me give me authority to go to Damascus and arrest them, bring them back to Jerusalem for persecution. And it was on his way to Damascus that he had his personal encounter with Jesus Christ. When that voice came in enlightened to him, and the light blinded his face, and they said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he, 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 he looked at the light, the light has blinded his face. The, the, the funny question he asked, which is, which is rather very, very curious, is, who art thou, Lord? He didn't say, who art thou? He said, who art thou? He, he, he added, Lord, to it. So in other words, what we are saying is that he knew that that was a divine encounter. Because any voice coming from heaven must be from the gods. So he said, who art thou? He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And it will be hard for thee to kick against stone. He said, what can I do for you then? He said, go to Damascus. There you'll be told what you're going to do for me. So we all, we all read the story. So that was, so it took 30 years. And, uh, and then, then, then the second reason is conservative Jewish Christian wanted to keep Christianity within the context and control of the Jewish religion. Judaizers, which we read also in, in Acts of Pursuit 9, the conservative Jewish um, Christians. You see, we, we have the liberal Jewish, we have the conservative, and we have the Lazifia. The conservative are the ones that, that want to say, no, Christianity, that Christianity is, 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 is close, is, 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 is predominantly for us. It should not be extended to the Gentiles. They are conservative, they are traditionalists. And that was why Paul had problem with them. Because the first encounter they, 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 they had was with Peter. Because when Peter returned back to Jerusalem, they asked Peter, they said, why did you go to, to, to uh, Joppa to go and give the the the, the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles, to the Cornelius. They questioned him. And Peter said, No. This is what happened. I saw a vision three times. The, 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 the platform came down from heaven and told me, and there are so many crippled, uh, different kind of animal, bats that we don't eat, snake, and all these things. And, and the voice said, I should kill and eat. And I said, No. You know, I don't, I have never eaten anything unclean in my mouth. And the, and the voice said, what I've already created, you must not call unclean. So, the, 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 the different came three times. And then, then the visitor came downstairs. They said, they're asking for Peter. And the voice told me, go with them. Then I know straight away that God was talking to me that I must not call anybody unclean. And when I got there, I've not even finished talking. When the Holy Spirit descended upon this Gentile, the same way and manner he descended upon us on the day of Pentecost. He said, so who am I? That I shall refuse or command the water that they should not be baptized. If these people receive this gift of the Holy Spirit in the same way and manner in which we received it. So they kept their, their, their they, they kept quiet. They said, truly, truly, God is no respecter of any person. He has extended the gift of the Holy Spirit even to the Gentiles. So now, so that was the first encounter Peter had with them. And the second uh, encounter today had with Apostle Paul. When Apostle Paul was he uh, left uh, um, uh, Antioch to go to uh, uh, on his missionary journey, when he was in Galatia and uh, 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 Philippi, all the, all the Gentiles, they received the embraced Christianity, but they were still practicing their, their, their idol worshipping. They left the idol worshipping, but they were still eating all the, all the meat, different kind of meat, blood, blood meat, or, or, or meat offered to idol, or strangled animal. And the conservative Jews say, no. Beside the fact that you cannot be a Christian under other conservative uh, uh, stands without being circumcised. 
So, so they impose a constitution before they can be admitted, fully admitted, then they impose a constitution of, of, of the genders. And how can you circumcise a 30 year old man? Even a five year old boy is already grown up for circumcision. Because the pain is there, the pain is there. So how much more a grandpa or, or a, a father say, tie him down and circumcise him. So that causes a controversy. And then Peter, so, 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 Apostle Paul had a problem with them when he got to Jerusalem. And there was a big argument. And, and that was what started the Jerusalem council. They gathered together and said, what, what are we going to do? So it was now James now, the brother of Jesus, that said, okay, what we're going to do is that write a letter and then send two disciples to go with Paul that we have had your we have had your supplication and everything but what we're going to do is that you cannot you, you don't have to do circumcision but abstain from all the food that was strangled abstain from all the food that were offered to idols abstain from this abstain from that but we are not going to make salvation difficult for you so so they send the letter to them so that was another problem and then the third one is the Roman government began making a distinction between the two religions they had seen Christianity as a sect within Judaism and in those days when the Roman the, the Roman uh, 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 government they, they've already accepted Judaism as, as, as the traditional legal tradition a uh, uh, religion of the Jewish people so when Christianity came into it they just saw it as another branch under Judaism not that an, as, an, as, a, as a different entity no it was just under under Judaism and when the, the religious leaders Pharisee and all this started complaining because they, they were the one controlling the the, the, the the government they were the one paying the tribute to Caesar and, they, and, and the high priests and all of them, they are all very powerful people. So, so it was easy for them to convince the, the Roman uh, uh, councils and the Roman uh, governors against Christianity. So, so they were using the Roman people now to persecute Christianity. Besides the fact that Christianity was also preaching freedom. Freedom. In other words, it was pre the, the Christianity did not distinguish between slave and master before God. It's as far as he said, he said slave, slave should obey their masters, but before God they are all equal. And that is unacceptable to the, to the Roman people because Roman people, they kept slaves. And Roman people, they, they, they kept mistresses, they have concubine. And these are all the things that Christianity or Paul preach against. So, 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 so that's why it was difficult. Then, then, then they started persecuting the Christian. So these are all the problems that... that this um, the author was laying the, the, the author of the Hebrew was laying and, and it's, it, it, this, these are the background upon which the, the book of Hebrew was written because these are all the things that were happening then so because of this pressure many Jewish Christians were faced with the decision to either return to their former religion or make a complete break with Judaism in order to fully embrace Christianity they could no longer have it both ways. The letter to the Hebrews, therefore, was written to convince them that in becoming Christian, they had made the right choice and they were to persevere in that choice. As, as, as the Hebrew, the, the author told us in chapter 6 of verse 11. See, because one thing is, it got to a stage where you cannot serve two masters. You can't have it both ways. You cannot be... A, 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 Jew, a, 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 a Jewish um, <coughs> following Mosaic law and a Jew following Christianity. The two don't go together. So, so it got to a stage where you have to make a break. You have to make a decision. Either you go back or you take the chance, take the risk, become a full Christian and face the music. But to face the music, to, 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 to completely break away from Judaism and face Christianity, then the author need to convince them what are the benefits, what are the advantages. Because without, because nobody is a fool, nobody wants to be in a horse soup when, when you don't even know what you are gaining from it. 
So the full title of this epistle is to the Hebrew. It was not written as a general epistle to all the Jews, no. But it could have been used in this way if necessary. This letter therefore was addressed to a specific group that the author knew and was planning to visit as we also read in chapter 13 verse 23 when, when the author said i will come soon pray for me so so that the author was writing to a particular set of people that he has already known not to all the jews so who is the author of this book who is the author of this book and there's no definite proof that there are because there are different several theories as to who wrote this episode an unknown writer who knew Paul's writing and wrote this letter using this as resource material. One, one is an unknown writer, definitely, definitely is an unknown writer that knows the, the, the style of writing of Apostle Paul. So, so it must be somebody that has have intimacy with Paul relationship with Paul, he has been moving with Paul, he knows, he knows how Paul writes his own writing and everything, so and then he used all the material of Paul to write this letter. But who can that be? Or Barnabas? You see, Barnabas was a Levite, from the, from, from a Levite as, we, as we were told in Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, verse 36. So he was also familiar with Jewish tradition an Old Testament custom. He wrote Greek since he, he, he came to, from Cyprus. He was not known for his uh, scholarship uh, uh, acumen, but rather as a man of action. And yet this episode was written using an educated form of the Greek language. So Barnabas came from Cyprus and they speak Greek, but he was not very very educated like apostle uh, paul but the writer of this uh, hebrew he wrote it in greek and in a, in a very educated way so 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 how could it be barnabas because barnabas is not was not as soundly educated as to write this kind of thing and there's no way nobody else that we know of that that um, that usually write in Greek except Barnabas. So, so could, could it have been Barnabas? He wrote it and then somebody helped him to review it and edit it. Nobody knows. Then the second one is Apollo. Who's Apollos? And Apollo was also a Greek scholar and an orator from Alexandria, well versed in the Old Testament as well as post writing. Wow. So he was well known and respected in the church. However, none of his other writings exist and he doesn't name himself in the text. So Apollo was a very, very educated man. He was an orator. From Alexandra, he wrote in Greek. He was sound in Greek. But he has never attested his name to any of his writing. So we don't know whether it was Apollo that wrote it. And then another suggestion suggested maybe is, is Paul himself. But this apostle was familiar with the Old Testament too because Apostle Paul studied under the Old Testament and the Gospel. He may have first written it as a sermon. Many references suggest that an oral presentation. Maybe it was Apostle Paul when he was preaching. He didn't, he didn't put it down into writing. But orally when he was preaching, he said it. As, as we were told in Hebrew uh, 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 chapter 1 verse 1. And all early church fathers, they, we, we have Clement, 156a, the after the, 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 the death of Jesus Christ. And then we also have Jerome. But they all conclude that it was written by Paul. And the best guess or theory is that it was originally written by Paul as a sermon. And later translated into Greek by Luke during or after Paul's death in Rome, 67 AD. So, so it was 67 years after the death of Jesus Christ that Apostle Paul was beheaded in Rome. So, so the Pope, the first Pope uh, uh, Clement and, uh, and, and Jerome, they were called Bishop of Rome. 
they said it, 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 it must have been Apostle Paul that, that he didn't write it down himself, but he was preaching it. And, and what the people listening to him, that is, uh, Luke was a very, very educated man, that it was Luke that, that now collected all the data, all the sermon of Apostle Paul and put them into writing. That was what the, 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 the early uh, 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 bishop said. So what we know for sure is that the writer knew his readers and their circumstances. The writer also knew Timothy was well versed in the Old Testament and temple ritual, fully grasped the knowledge of who Christ was and was an excellent writer. But as Oregon said after his study of the question, but who wrote the epistle? Only God knows, certainly. Only God knows. And what, when, when was it written? What date was that book of people written? 96 AD, 96 years after the death of Jesus Christ, the book of Hebrew was written. And Pope Clement, the Bishop of Rome, quote from Hebrew, so it's definitely before 96 AD. So if Clement should quote from the Bible, I mean, from, from, from he, he quote Hebrew from the Bible, so which means that it was not written in 96 AD, it was written before 96 AD. <coughs> and then 70 AD, it couldn't be 70 AD either too. Because the city of Jerusalem and the temple are destroyed by the Roman army. Because if you remember, it doesn't until 70 years after the, the death of Jesus Christ, the ascension, that the Roman Empire came and destroyed Jerusalem and burned down the whole temple. Now, we say now since the book of Hebrew deals with temple ritual at length, the fact that this event is not mentioned in the epistle strongly suggests that it was written before 70 AD. Also, the work of the priest is referred to in the present tense. So in other words, in the book of Hebrew that we have already read, we read in chapter 6 and chapter 8 about temple rituals. We read about, 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 about the construction of the temple, the inner, the, the holies of holies, and then the, the holy, and then the, 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 the Gentiles places, and then the rituals of the, of the high priest in the past and so, which means that if the book, if the book describes all this into detail, then, then the book has already been written before 70 AD, before the, the Romans came and destroyed the temple. So, so it could, it could not, it could not, it could not have been written in 70 AD. Then 33 to 60 AD, in Hebrew 2, verses 3 to 4 and 13 to 7, he speak of leaders in the church. And those who have given leadership example and have since passed on. And this suggests that at least a generation or two have taken place since the initial establishment of the church in Jerusalem. So most scholars put the writing between 63 to 69 AD. Because the temple is still standing and functioning. And there has been a time for several generations of Christian leaders to have been raised up in the church. So what we are saying is that if the book of Hebrew talk about the, 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 the Christian believers and the leaders that have died, that as we have already read, if you remember in chapter 13, that, that we should that uh, uh, we should obey, we should respect, we should follow the, the teachings of those that have already been dead. If you remember that we should follow their teaching. So, so which means that it is very, very likely that about two or three generations have already lived and died before this book was uh, 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 written. So, 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 so that it took about 60 years or 63 and 63 years means, means that 62, uh, uh, 63 years means uh, uh, 63 years can have, can have a can have a generation of children, can also have a generation of grandchildren. So, so which means that that book must have been written between 63 to 69 AD. And then purpose, and what is the purpose? And, and, and what is the purpose of writing this in? It says in, in verse 13, 
I mean, in chapter 13, verse 22, he said, But I urge you, brethren, bear with this word of exhortation, for I have written to you bravely. The purpose of this epistle was to encourage Jewish Christians who were wavering in their faith and contemplating a return to Judaism to remain faithful to Christ. And you cannot blame them. They were, they were at crossroad. What are we going to do? Too much persecution in Christianity. Do we not go back to Judaism and see what we could do? The writer said, no, don't go back to Judaism. And that's what Jesus Christ said, anybody, after following me, still looking back, is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. And they were discouraged by persecution and being forced to choose. Two, they began to neglect the assembly, which is usually a false sign of spiritual illness. And that was what we first read. They were beginning to, 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 to backslide. They were beginning to backslide. And then many had already returned to Judaism, as we read in Hebrew 6, 4 to 6. And then it was becoming clear that the Jewish nation was not going to embrace Christianity. Because it was at, at that time that they were making life difficult for Christians. If you, are, if, you, if you are a Christian in Jerusalem, you will not get a job. So, 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 majority of them, they lost favors. They were not employed. And, and, the, and, and the, the, the husband, some of them scattered around. And their widows, the widows were, 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 were neglected. People, they could not feed their children. Because they were selling everything to come together. And the reason why, and, and that was the beginning of, of coming together, they sold everything they have and, and they, they put them at the apostles' feet so that the people that were unemployed, the people that were persecuted, and even the widows could be fed, could be supplied with food. And when the, 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 the widows, or the, 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 the Greek widows were complaining that their, their, their women were being neglected, it was then that the apostles said, wait, we are to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, not to be serving uh, tables, uh, dishing out food distribution. That let us appoint people of good faith, people that are trustworthy, people that, 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 that can stand before God, people of faith. So that was the origin of, of uh, uh, diaconate. So they said, let us, let, 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 let us choose seven men. And that was when they chose seven men, and Stephen was among them, to be the first seven deacons that are, are entrusted to the treasury of God, to the treasury of the church, so that the apostles can have enough time to preach the gospel and teach. And their wives became deaconesses. So that, so that, that was exactly what happened. And then, then the Jewish Christians were going to be isolated. They didn't fit with Gentiles, rejected by their own Jewish family. So, so the, the, the Jewish Christians now, they, 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 were, they, they, they found themselves caught in the middle. They were not accepted fully by the, by, by the conservative Jewish people. And, and the Gentiles too, they, 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 they could not fit you know, with the Gentiles because they could not mix freely with the, with the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles were we are very, very free. They have sexual immorality. They have the, I mean, like the Galatians, the, the Philippians, or, or, and or the Ephesians, all these people. So, so it was difficult for Christians to mix with them. So, so they, were, they, were, they were caught in the middle. So you, so you could see the challenges that the author had to be able to persuade these people not to go back because they have every reason to go back to Judaism. So what was the approach? The author compared the two religions and challenges his readers to choose one and for all, which is superior. In the epistle, he compares Christ to various important features of the Jewish religion. He, he has to be able to convince them 
that Christianity is superior to Judaism. So he had to use what they are already familiar with. He had to use the 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 the, the objects and 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 the, the teachings they had, they were familiar with. The prophets, the angels, Moses, Joshua, and Aaron, all of who represented in one way or the other the Jewish religion and its worship. And once he finishes his series of comparison and arguments, the author lists a number of heroes who were persecuted and suffered for their faith, but persevered. And this done as an encouragement for them to emulate. He completes the epistle with practical teaching about how to live faithfully from day to day as a Christian and then finishes with greetings and exhortations. The general outline. Hebrew is divided into two major parts. The glory of Christ. As we read in chapter 1 to chapter 10. So, so that, that chapter 1 to chapter 10, he said the Jewish people, we are used to the concept that God revealed himself through various ways. Through people, through angels, through re religious rites, that is the temple worship, sacrificial system. God glorified himself and his people through these ways, and the people took confidence in and gave praise to God for this interaction throughout their history. The angels. It was the angels that appeared to Abraham. It was the angels that appeared to Zachariah, the father of John the Baptist. It was the angel that appeared to Mary. It was the angel that appeared also to, to uh, Joseph. It was the angel that also appeared to Isaac. So, 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 so that they are they they, they already used to angels. But, but the author says Jesus Christ is superior to the angels. Then what, what, what about Moses? Moses wrote the Ten Commandments. So they were very familiar with Moses. But Jesus Christ compared with Moses that Jesus Christ is superior to Moses and is also superior to Aaron. Because Aaron was a false high priest and Aaron was the only one that was permitted to enter the holies of holies. But Aaron also had to, to sacrifice, he had to kill goat or lamb to, to, to sanctify himself before, before he could enter the holies of holies. And he sacrifices yearly, so that it's not that one, one sacrifice will lay. No, it's yearly. But Jesus Christ is, is not, is, he, Jesus Christ sacrifices only once. And there are scriptures that, that differentiate Jesus Christ from, from the prophets and also from Aaron or from Moses. So in this first part of Hebrew, the writer demonstrates that no matter how glorious big things we are, the revelation that is uncovering we receive from God through Jesus Christ is far superior. Therefore, in the first 10 chapters, the writer demonstrates how Jesus is more glorious than the prophets, than the angels, than Moses, and thus superior and worthy to be followed by and obeyed. Because who are the prophets? Nathan was one that appeared before King, King David. Samuel was one that appeared before King Saul. And a lion that appeared before Hannah. So these are all prophets. Prophets Ezekiah, Jeremiah, uh, uh, Elisha, Elijah. These are all prophets that had gone. And then number two, then the glory of the church, which is chapter 10 uh, to 13, chapter 13. You see, once he has established the, super, the supremacy of Christ by demonstrating his greater glory, the author encourages the church to glorify his head, which is Jesus, by faithfulness to him and holiness in him. The conclusion left unsaid is that if Jesus is more glorious than the Jewish religion, 
including all the prophecy rituals. Then, his church shares that glory and is therefore superior also. So the argument being, don't abandon the greater for the lesser. So if Jesus Christ is superior to your Moses, to your Aaron, to your angels, to your prophets, and you accept it, you, are, you believe it, you agree, then, then the church, that is the church of Christ, then is superior to your own religion. So you must never abandon the superior for the lesser one. So that was the argument that, that the, the author was writing to them about. And they believed him. They believed him. Then, then, it's also, then also, the, 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 he, he, talk, he talk about Jesus Christ too. He said, in these last days, has spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed here of all things, through whom also he made the world. And that's God saying. So, and here is one who inherits something left to him by someone else, usually thing left as being gathered or built by one person and left to another to inherit. So the writer here notes that Jesus Christ is the inheritor of all things. Because through him all things we are created, as we as we have already read before in First John uh, uh, one. In the beginning was the word. If you remember, in the beginning was the word, and Jesus Christ is the word. So and he is radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and uphold all things by the word of his power. So in discussing the, the, the personalhood of Jesus, the author says three things about Jesus Christ, which no one could ever say about any other prophets. He is the radiance of his glory. That is the light and the brightness of God. He is the exact representation of his nature. That is, he, he is not, he, he, he is not uh, 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 it is an image of God. And that's why we have the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, so is the exact representation. And that's why Jesus Christ said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So the idea here is that Jesus Christ isn't a copy of God. He has the same nature as God. The clearest example of this different but the same idea is seen in the difference between male and female. Men and women are different in gender, but they have the same nature. In the same way, when we see Jesus Christ, we see a person separate from God, the Father, but one that has the same nature as God. The prophets did, they did supernatural things by the power of God, but they only possess a human nature. But Jesus Christ did supernatural things because he had both a human and divine nature. So Jesus Christ is completely different from them. And he opposed all things by the word of his power. He spoke with authority. He didn't say, by the name of Jesus Christ, arise and walk. No. He gave them authority. He had authority over nature. He had authority over illness. He had authority over everything. So in the beginning, God expressed his will by saying, let there be light and light appeared. So converting God's express word into reality was Christ's role in creation. Let there be light. So when in the boat during the storm, Jesus calmed the sea simply by expressing his will through his word the power to convert his express will into object reality and the storm and everything became calm. So to the cripple, in the temple he offered forgiveness with just his word and then to prove that he had power even over unseen things like forgiveness of sin, he healed him again with just his word. The prophets did many great things, but the word they spoke were his words, and the things they did were done through his will. Jesus was a greater than the prophets because he was before them and after them. His 
personalhood reflected God's image, will, and power, and finally, his position was greater than theirs. And his position. When he had made purification of sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. The author described the two positions that Jesus took that no prophet ever called one as sacrifice for sin, the lowest position Jesus could have expressed his preeminence and personalhood without leaving heaven. But he did so in order to deal with man's sin. He came down. He was 100% human being to fulfill the redemption plan. And he shed his blood once for all for our sin. And then he sat at the right hand of God. So the highest position authority that is in Philippians 2.8 explained that Jesus returned to reclaim the position of authority he occupied before his humiliation on the cross. So it is interesting to note that Jesus is first and last in a horizontal time frame. He occupies the top and bottom roles in the vertical position of honor. So summary now, the author begins his letter by, by exalting Jesus Christ. He says that he is greater than the prophet. He is the first and last in history. Prophet lived in between history. But Jesus Christ is, is, first, is Alpha and Omega. And he is divine in nature. Prophets are only human. And then he is supreme in authority. Prophets have no authority. No prophet could or ever did claim such things. And greater than the angels. Angels both the Hebrew and Greek words for angel mean messenger or messenger from God. But the word angel in the Bible refers to order. Spiritual or supernatural, not divine. They, are, they were created things who act as God's messenger to men and agents who carry our God's will among the men. So they are different people. They are spirits. So why is Hebrew so important? Hebrew clearly lays out the present priestly ministry of Christ in the life of the believer. Jesus is both the divine Son of God and completely human. And in his priestly role, he clears the way for human beings to approach the Father in heaven through prayer, as we read in Hebrew 4, 14 to 16. So the priesthood of Jesus Christ is superior to the Old Testament priesthood of Aaron, because only through Jesus do we receive eternal salvation, chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Furthermore, Jesus became the permanent and perfect high priest, going beyond all other priests by offering himself as a sinless sacrifice on behalf of the sins of human beings. Chapter 7, 24 to, to uh, chapter 9. And what the big idea? Throughout its pages, Hebrew makes clear that Jesus Christ exceeds all other people, all other pursuits, all other objects, all other hopes to which human beings offer allegiance. Hebrew pictures Jesus Christ as better than the angels, as bringing better lives to humanity through salvation, as offering a better hope than the Mosaic law could promise, as a better sacrifice for our sins than a bull or a goat, and as providing a better inheritance in heaven for those who place their faith in him. Hebrew 1, 4, 6, 7, 10, Jesus is indeed superior to all others. So this message of superiority of Jesus Christ would have been particularly important to Jewish Christians in Rome who were struggling under Nero's persecution and were considering moving back towards the Mosaic law. The writer to the Hebrews showed these Jewish Christian believers that though they were faced with suffering, they were indeed following a better way and they should persevere. And how does he apply this? The ancients created idols fashioned of wood and stone. Modern society has set aside that type of idol in favor of new idols. What do we worship? We don't worship stone today, but we worship gadgets. We worship material things, 
You worship our television, we worship our wrist watches, a comfortable lifestyle, and even our own children. So human beings have seen and experienced the limitless bounty of idolatry where we place some created object or person in the place of the one true God. And what idols do you hold or dare in your life? So the letter of Hebrew makes clear that only one person decides to hold the primary place in our life. While we are busy idolizing our move up to corporate lead ladder or placing all our hopes in our kids, Jesus offers us a better position, a better priest, a better covenant, a better hope, and a better sacrifice. Only when we give Jesus his rightful place in our life will everything else in life fall into his rightful places. So I will make available to us the, the key verses in the whole of the Hebrew. One is Hebrew 1, 1 to 2. One is Hebrew 2, 3. One is Hebrew 4, 14 to 16. I'm going to I'll, I'll post it in the post so that you can read it. You can so so, so you can you can read it, and then uh, before before we close tonight, I just ask one or two questions. Now they said Jesus Christ, Jesus the Father's own Son. In what way do you think that the author of Hebrew is using the word Son as a metaphor, as a biological relationship? Or how will a son's word have more weight than a prophet's? So the author, the author was calling Jesus, he was using the word uh, 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 father's son, that is father's own son. Jesus Christ is father's own son. So what what, what was the, the author of the Bible driving at? Is it is it is it even in a metaphor like like uh, like uh, the earthly father and his son? Or or a prophet like like a uh, Apostle Paul called Timothy's son. What, 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 how do you think the author was? What, what was the author driving at? Can somebody give me that answer? Because if you remember, during the when, when John, uh, uh, Jesus Christ went to, to, to be baptized by, by, by John the Baptist, a dove descended and said, This is, this is uh, my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So, how do we understand that? How, how was the how, how was the author presenting it to the to the Jewish? Does anybody understand? Okay. Why? Yes. Why? Why is Jesus Christ? Why? Why is Jesus Christ the Son of God? So how is Jesus Christ the Son of God? Can you tell us? Now, if, if you remember, when, when Jesus Christ went to, 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 to River Jordan and, 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 and the voice came, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The, and God is now telling, telling, is revealing Jesus Christ as his own son. And if you remember, the, the author of the Hebrew also referring to Jesus Christ as son of God, son of God, son of God. And, and when Mary, the angel, angel uh, Michael appeared to Mary, he said he will come, she will come, she will, she will, she will, she will um, that, that the Holy Spirit will, will be on her and, 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 and that she will not bring up Jesus Christ. So, so that's so that, so that it was, it, it was, it was immaculate conception. And, and that was the author of the Bible now telling, telling these people that Jesus Christ is just not an ordinary person, but is a son of God. So, so it's different from our earthly one, but it's, it, it, and, and, and it's not even completely different because your, your son has, has the same gene as you. And your son has the same characteristic traits as you. So, so that if your son has the same traits and the same 
uh, 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 characteristics and uh, traits as you, then automatically Jesus Christ, also being the Son of God, also has every 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 attributes of God. And that was why when his disciples asked him, show us the Father. And Jesus Christ said, What are you asking? When you have already seen me, you are still asking me to show to show uh, you the Father. When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Because I and the Father are one. My Father in me, I in the Father. So, so that was what the author of the, of the, of the author of, uh, of Hebrew was telling them. And then the second question said, In what ways are we not immune to drifting away from the gospel? In what ways are we not immune from drifting away from the gospel? In what ways are we are, are we not um, immune? Mean immune mean immune mean that we, we are we are not completely free. That that no matter how much is our faith, we can see we can see drift away from the gospel. So in what ways are we likely to in what ways are we likely to drift away from the gospel? Because some of them were drifting away for all the reasons that I've already explained, persecution and this. So in what ways today, in what ways today are we likely to drift away? Not particularly you, but in what ways today are Christians likely to drift away from the gospel? Can somebody answer that one for me? Because, because all the young people are running away from the church today. A majority of American men, they go to, on Sunday, you see them going to the park. So in other words, what we are now asking is um, in, 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 that is, uh, in what ways are we likely to drift away, to drift away from the gospel? Can somebody answer that one? Why, why are people drifting away from the gospel? Yeah. Hello, Bank. Yes, yes, I'm listening. By sinning. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. By sinning, right. Now, <clears throat> does it mean that, um, now definitely, what is sin? Sin is committing something that, that, uh, they, they say a, a country without that without law there is no sin and if you don't know something is a sin you commit it is it a sin and what what is happening now today is that people are drifting away because the church is also failing in their responsibility to humanity the church is not reaching out to the community the church is not preaching the gospel of jesus christ to the community the church is not playing the role of being a sanctuary for the poor. The church is not playing the role of being a, a, a hospital for, 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 for the people that are spiritually sick. A lot of people, they need companions, they, they need uh, uh, advice, they need consolation, they need comfort. They come to church seeking that kind of thing they miss out in the world. But when they get to the church, the church is being, is being politicized. What they find in the church is even, is not, is even worse than what they find outside. So people, people are likely to drift away. When you come to the church and, and, and whoever is preaching, is, is preaching something that, that is even grieving your own spirit. It's not giving you, it's not giving you word of encouragement, word of exhortation, word of comfort, word of hope. And those are the essential ingredients that we need in the church. Hope, encouragement, support, moral support, healing, spiritual healing. When you don't get those, you, you, you are likely to drift away. So that, that is what they say. So that's what, that's what the apostles and the writer says. Say, according to the author, how can we successfully resist the tendency to drift? How can we successfully resist the tendency to drift away how we can resist is what we are all doing tonight we are all of us are keyed into this bible study and every bible study we gain something we don't waste time we gain something we are not idle 
we don't go home empty so so that so that as we go home the things that we hear we keep and we keep we, we, we so, so that we 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 are remind we we are reminded every day every day every day every day that we have something to cherish we have something to keep but but when we don't attend the bible study class we don't attend the prayer meeting we don't attend anything at all except coming to church on sunday and when you come to sunday church on sunday you only listen to the sermon for 30 minutes or so and you go home you forget about it so so that so that you are not spiritually built you are not spiritually empowered and the satan is busy is busy offering different kind of ent ent enticement for you so 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 that so that, so that you, you by, by by staying close to the word of god is how we can continue not to drift away from the church and the last question in what way did jesus christ suffer during his life and death in what way we, and that was a simple question in what ways did jesus christ suffer during his life and death can somebody answer that one for me Elder Bank, Elder David, Elder Kagbo, Dr. Pa, in what ways did Jesus Christ suffer during his life and death? In what ways did... Um, this beautiful, he was crucified. Okay. In what way did he suffer during his life? Not death, during his life. In which in what way did he suffer? Because Jesus Christ said, Fox have holes. He said, But the Son of Man has no home to lay his head. He was going about preaching the gospel. They insulted him, they called him names. They challenged him, they ridiculed him during his life. They said he was using the, the power of Beelzebub. And then his death, he obeyed the commandments to the last that is, he was being led to the slaughter and yet he opened not his mouth. He suffered it. So does suffering have any value? And what happens when we live in such a way to avoid all suffering? Does suffering have any value? Does do we, when we suffer for something and we gain we get that something, how do we feel? So in other words, what I'm saying, does suffering have any value? That is that is what the author is saying. That does suffering have any value? So what happens when we live in such a way to avoid all suffering? When we live in such a way to avoid suffering, what happens? When we live in such a way to avoid suffering, we compromise, don't we? We don't say the truth. Because if you say the truth, you will offend people, right? If you say the truth, you will be persecuted. If you say the truth, you will, you will, you will, you will mortgage your soul. So, so you don't say the truth. So, you, so, so that you compromise, you mortgage your soul. And you, because you want the easy way out, you want to please everybody. So that is also, so, so, that, so that it is not better for us not to have to have to choose. And that's what the author is now saying that there is peace, there is prosperity, there's everything. Because he, Jesus Christ said, In my father's house, there are many mansions. That I'm going there to make a place for you. Where I go, you will go with me. So it is better for you to, to store up your treasure in heaven than to enjoy all the enjoyment on earth. We are moths, we are we are we are robbers, we are we are decay, everything will happen to it. So that is what the author is saying to us. So we really we, I'm going to publish all this for, for people so that we can read it. So any other question before we round up? Any question? Any question at all? Any any question? No question. Okay, Auntie Mary, can you pray for us? Can you close us in prayer? Thank
Amen. Can we all share the can we all share the grace? May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the safe knowledge for the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall join the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much. So from next week, we are going to start the book of James. And uh, our our dear elder Osman Kabo is the one that is going to uh, bear the card for us. So we we'll, we'll continue to pray for him, to God to give him utterance. And then we we'll continue to remember our general Vasya and our first uh spiritual mother in our prayer throughout their stay in in Sierra Leone. So may God bless all of you and thank you so much. So I publish everything for you. And um thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> we thank God. God bless you. Good night everybody. <laughs>